Hello, everybody. It's S. Eddie Medhaven here today. And I actually, um, there, there was one thing I wanted to do a while ago, which was taking tech tree tanks, premium tanks, everything else, and doing a tier list on it originally. This was, uh, it was on my plans to do like a couple of years ago, but I never did it. But finally, today I kind of sat down, I was looking over. I'm like, I, that would be real easy to do because there's already templates already uh, pre made for it. So, this template is um, World of Tanks Tier 8 Premium Tanks, but it's not going to be Premium Tanks. It's just Tier 8 Tanks. You can remove the premium from this uh, right here. It was a pre-made template, and I decided to go ahead and add a ton of stuff in. I added so much that it actually made the web page load slow. So, <laughs> absolutely enjoyable. So, I want to go over um, every single tank that I have up on this list. Some of them I don't have access to, but the ones that I don't have access to... I will make sure to um, you know, clarify that, hey, even though I don't have them, I reached out to a couple of people in the community to get their opinions on them. And on top of their opinions on them, it's also combined with my experience with the tanks as well during uh, versing them or possibly playing with a couple of them on alternate accounts. All right, now let's, um, there's going to be a couple of tanks in this list. For instance, we're going to have the M4Y that's not going to be used. Uh <sighs> There's a couple on this list. The gun sold won't be used. Mm. A lot of them are actually in the game now. It's not exactly a giant list that's missing anymore. Just a couple of things. Like the BZ-176, which is somewhere. This is going to be a large list. Anyways, starting off, let's go ahead and uh, hit up the AMX M449 Liberté. I actually... Personally, I want to put this thing in the pay-to-win category, but I kind of don't feel like it's going to fit up there. They did buff it. And the buff that it received made it really, really nasty. So I'm going to put it into the super competitive category. Uh, the Soma SM, it's okay situationally. The Carnivon Action X, it's a decent choice. Caliban, uh, Caliban would have originally been inside super competitive, but they removed the advanced reload off of it. Uh, the advanced reloader, which prevents you from the shell swaps whenever you want to. So now I, I, I like the Caliban... But at the same time, it's one of the tanks that if you get it, you got to be really specific on the reasons why you're buying it. I'm going to put it into the avoid category just because this is a tank that is going to be extremely. It, it, it's just they came out, they nerfed it, and then not a lot of people were happy with that. The WZ-111 Chinese Tier 8, uh, great performer, decent choice. I'm going to put it in the decent choice category just because this tank... It did receive a buff. It's up to 196 standard pin from 175, and it's also got preferential matchmaking. If anything, great performers is where I'd actually put that. If I had like an S class, like a, you know, like a S to F rating or G rating, this would actually be like an A class tank is where I'd actually set that. Chrysler K. Um, Chrysler K, I'm going to slap this into the uh, super competitive category right off the bat just because... If you know how to play your Chrysler, the thing turns into an absolute monstrosity. E75TS, I'm going to be putting this into the decent choice category. I have a lot of matches inside this, and I want to see a lot more come out of the tank. For instance, if it had a reload buff and it was brought down from, I believe it's a, it's got like an 11 second reload with a 360 alpha. It was If it was brought down to like an 8 second reload, I'd put it into the super competitive or great performer. But it's a decent choice, maybe an all right situationally, just because that reload gives it a massive hindrance, but it does have really good mobility, so decent choice. The FCM 50 ton, a lot of people talk about this tank in a really high fashion. Whenever I play it, it's got really good mobility, preferential matchmaking, stands out quite a bit. M4Y, not going to be on the list. The low, ever since it got the buff to its gun, the 360 alpha, to me, this tank, the reload isn't really what's in the way of the tank. So for me, I'd put it into great performers. Uh, M54 Renegade, which is the um, Sergeant Slaughter and the uh, T54 something something, but <laughs> I can't remember. Originally, I would put this into super competitive, but due to the accuracy changes that console has had, I want to put it into decent choice or great performer just because it has fallen off quite a bit and it is slowly becoming a tank that is just not worthwhile as much as it used to be and it, it it used to be super competitive but it's kind of fallen down from that pedestal so great performers is where i'm going to stick it but even then it's kind of like all right situationally just because that hatch 
plays against you in so many ways. Uh, Charlemagne, uh, immediately straight up to super competitive. A lot of people may disagree with me on this, but I find the Charlemagne to be an absolute monster if you're utilizing the gun correct, uh, the gun depression correctly. The M6A2E1 Mutant, we're going to put this into Great Performer, maybe even just all right situationally great not great performer because it's got preferential matchmaking it's got a decent loadout it is put together pretty fine uh t56 skoda a lot of people want to, would say pay to win on this tank but personally i would say either great performer or super competitive on the t56 just because this thing is a tank that there's others out there that kind of make this thing stand out and perform worse at the same time. So for me, I kind of want to say pay to win for the Skoda T56. But even then, it, if there was a middle middle ground on this between super competitive and pay to win, that's where the Skoda T56 would go. But it leans more towards pay to win. Just because this thing will make you so much silver. And it's competitive enough if you're playing instead of a team situation. IS-6, uh, it's alright situationally. It's been out for a long time. It's kind of fallen off a little bit. Uh, Patriot, the T26 E5. I'd probably say great performer on the Patriot. The KV4 Klasklowski. I can never pronounce this. If you want me to be honest, I hate it. I hate it with a passion. And the reason why is because rather than buffing the speed that this tank needed to be able to get in and out of cover properly, they, were, they buffed the frontal armor plates even though this thing is meant for side scraping. So they completely took it out of context and ruined it t34 great performer inside the t34 maybe even super competitive in terms of the way that it's been designed now just because i do believe as of recent this tank did receive a buff actually let's double check that yes it did receive the buff so now the t34 is rocking a 420 alpha rather than the 400 alpha which, combined with the reload, which is under 10 seconds, makes this thing an absolute monstrosity for newer players that are coming into the game and looking to get their hands in their first premium. I personally feel that T-34 is a really good start off, combined with the low. These two tanks as early tanks in the game for newer players, I find it to be absolutely amazing. The CDC, great performer inside this tank. Uh, it's lightly armored for those who enjoy it, but for the average player, I would say all right situationally, just because... You have no armor. You need to have a decent crew to be able to actually utilize this tank correctly, and it does kind of have a little bit of a higher skill cap. T-77, uh, great performer. Really good mobility, able to get around the map quite a bit. The 16801P, it's a decent choice. I wouldn't say that it's uh, it stands out in any way, but one of your top tier, the hatch buff that it got, the way that the armor is designed, the reload that it's combined with, it is an absolute monstrosity whenever it comes down to it if played correctly until the premium hits you the vk 70, uh, 7501k uh this is a tank that i would like to see it get buffed a little bit if you want me to be honest it, it's a decent choice but it's very very niche and super situational if i had a niche category i'd put this inside of it just because it, it does need some love and it's kind of fallen off quite a bit compared to what it used to be like. Over on PC, this thing is an absolute monstrosity that is fun to play with. Uh, the 50TP prototype. This, I'm going to say, is a great performer, but as of recent, going to go down to the decent choice category just because its penetration is starting to fall off um, for the amount of time that's been inside the game outright. It is slowly starting to fall off. Basante C45. I'm going to put it in the I, I hate it category. I have uh, my emblems on this, or, you know, tank for sale, because honestly... It has fallen off, and I don't see this thing ever coming back unless they redo the reloads inside this tank, and I would never recommend anyone to get them, get their hands on it just because it plays against you more than plays with you. The 122TM, if this ever came to console, it would probably be okay situationally, but it's not on console just yet. I would love to see the 122TM come to console with that uh, 299 heat pin. Uh, the BZ176, not on console yet. The Emil 1951 three-shot autoloader. If you want my honesty here, this one I would say avoid. And then later down the list, the Barracuda is going to pop up as a great performer over on this side. So what we can do is, as everything takes a year and a half to load, the Barracuda. Oh yeah, see how this is loading and it's taking forever. Oh man, you can see I overloaded the website. And I put one of the other ones down here. 
Maybe not. I think I just squeezed it in. So Barracuda, we're going to put into the Great Performer category, just because you got that additional frontal spaced armor that gives you a little bit more of an advantage compared to the actual premium variant of the tank. And that's what stands out more on the Barracuda, just because you have that additional armor on the front, which makes a difference whenever you're reversing heat. IS-3A. This is a tank that over in PC has an advanced autoloader with a three-round magazine that loads in reverse compared to the Progetto, or yeah, any of the Progettos would be the best uh, comparison inside this tank. So its first shell loads the fastest, and then it starts to load a little bit slower with all the others. This one, I would actually say it's a decent choice, but whatever it comes down to it, I can't put it in great performers or super competitive. If it did have its auto loader, on the other hand, I would put it inside the super competitive category. Other than that, it's going to be getting slapped in the decent choice just because it's not bad. It doesn't stand out a whole lot, but it's okay. IS-5. It's all right situational, decent choice, um, but currently I'm going to say avoid just because there are so many things about this tank that the Defender, for instance, is a great performer. A Defender in the, the uh, IS-5, there's so many things in common between these two tanks, but whenever it comes down to it, the Defender has access to more armor, kind of the same mobility, same gun depression, while PC gave this thing 7 degrees of gun depression, and if console had 7 degrees of gun depression on this, I would actually put it into the super competitive category. But for now, I'm going to throw it into the avoid category just because it, has, it hasn't it has been buffed in a long time and it needs some love. KV-5, if you want my honesty here, decent choice. Or even great performer. Slap a, slap a fish would say pay to win. But I'm going to say decent choice on the KV-5 just because it's a preferential matchmaking tank. You're going to have to fire a lot of premium out of it. Um, the first match I ever played in my KV-5, I believe I got a Radley Walters inside of it. And then... <laughs> I never touched it again until one random day I dropped my controller and it threw me into a match immediately. Now, 703 Black on console. We have the Black variant, which is going to be coming up pretty soon for Black Friday. I highly recommend to get it because pay to win category, this is in fact, yes, pay to win. Without a doubt. WZ112, it's going to be in the all right situational. Actually, you know what? We're going to throw this into the great performers. The Potato Gun is a great performer tank. In terms of survivability, making silver, and the way that it's set up, this is going to fall in the same category as WZ-111, even though this one never received a penetration buff, which there's probably a couple of reasons why. Uh, maybe I'll get to that one later. Torvong B, because we had the Black Edition. If you want my um, opinion here, I'm going to put this in the super competitive. Between the great performers and super competitive is where I would throw the Torvong in. Uh, black edition that's going to be coming out as well if you guys want to get your hands on this i would highly recommend it just because it's a great tank it's really good at making silver and i find it to just be an absolute blast to play 59 Patton. i'm gonna put that in the avoid category i don't even need to say why look at the giant tumor on top uh the alt proto amx 30 great performer inside that tank amx ambt we're gonna put that into the great performer category rather than the super competitive, because if you play this tank, it would be a decent choice for people who like to make silver and like to keep control of their economy, because whenever you play this tank, you do have to load one or the other, just because we don't have any reload advantages compared to any of the other uh, variants inside the game. So you're kind of stuck loading full premium or full standards inside this tank, because if you don't, then you're going to be resetting reloads for like 40 seconds, and you'll find yourself out of the combat for quite a bit. But if you load full premium and you're looking to play competitively, it's a great performer. But if you're looking to use it to make silver, it'd be a decent choice. Astron Rex. This is a tank that actually has um, a lot of things behind it that make it stand out really good. It's a great crew trainer. It's a good silver maker. It's got really good DPM equivalent to the... T62A, tier 10 Russian, whenever you're fully loaded. So honestly, I would say super competitive for the Astron, but due to penetration fall off, we're going to say great performer. And the only reason why it's going to be hitting the great performer category is because this thing offers crew training out the butt. It's got a 50% crew training bonus, which I would recommend to use this over any of the other crew trainers in the game because it, it combines mobility and everything else inside of it. The Boar Ask, we're going to take this and put it in the super competitive category. I would not say pay to win because we don't have as much foliage as PC does. So this tank 
does get spotted out quite a bit, but against a good player that knows what he's doing, this can be a scary tank. Centurion 5-1 Rack. The Rack we're going to put into the super competitive category because you got a 120mm front plate, you got the heavy duty 254mm turret, you got the, I want to say, 50.8mm sides rather than just 50, so you can ricochet 152s, but I could be wrong about that on this tank. Uh, Chieftain T95, if you want my opinion, it's all right situationally, in my opinion, but the tank is absolutely horrible. So I'll put it into the avoid category just because you got the hatch. It's got a good reload, but against tier 7s, against tier 7s, they will actually trade with you almost on par to the amount of damage that you're doing to them inside this tank. So it, you have to play it correctly. And if you are someone who enjoys bad tanks, you can put this into, uh, uh, where did it go? I lost it. Somewhere. I am black. Oh, there you are. Yeah, I, I would say if, if you're someone who really, really likes bad tanks, it's pay to win. But at the moment, I would say it's all right situationally, and it's extremely specific in what you have to do to make this thing really stand out. Now, the Chimera, the standard version, I'm going to put into decent choice. We also do have the Inferno, and the Inferno would probably get put into great performer or even super competitive, but... For now, the Chimera, we're going to throw down into Decent Choice. This is one of the tanks that I have a bit more respect for, for people that play it, just because you need to know how to use it and then utilize it correctly to make it really stand out. The CS-52 list, let's put this into Great Performer category, just because it is kind of that all-round Polish medium. You got the armor, you got the damage, you got the full lineup. Uh, the FV4202P, it's going to be all right situationally, is where I'm going to throw this, because you have 50 millimeters of armor all around the hall. I believe it's a 120 millimeter turret with like a 90 millimeter forehead. So whenever you're not utilizing gun depression, this thing suffers against heat and high penetration AP. So at the moment, the Companzer 7, this is a tank that over on PC would be considered pay to win. But on console, we don't have the same foliage, we don't have the same perk system, we don't have a lot of the same advantages that PC does, so it's going to get thrown down into the um, R-Red situationally. But if this tank was to, let's say, get like an additional 40 damage on top of the uh, pre-existing damage it's already dealing, so from 200 to 240 damage, this thing would actually be immediately thrown up to super competitive. But at the moment... It's constantly getting out-traded and constantly getting spotted. It does have a good high explosive, so I guess decent choice is where I'd throw it uh, with a 90 millimeter high explosive that it has with 320 alpha. If you can make that round work, then this thing does become a little bit of a monster up in the great performer category, so decent choice is where the Compenser 7 will end up at. However, this tank, I do find it to kind of be lacking in a couple of ways, and it just it needs a little bit of love. Or we need a little bit of a map redesign within the World of Tanks console. Lance and C, I'm going to put this immediately into the Great Performer category just because this thing, if you know how to use it, it is a really good performing tank. It gets around the map. It's got decent concealment. A little bit better than the Compounder 7. So, I mean, this thing stands out to me in a couple of ways to where you're capable of getting the damage out, disappearing, and then reappearing. Lorraine 40 ton. That is a tier 9 on console. There is no tier 8 variant of it. Con uh, PC has a premium tank variant, which I would love to see over in console. Uh, the MK46KR, which I do believe I took a screenshot of it as well over in my end. I believe I did. It's going to be somewhere on this list. But if, if you want my honesty, this thing... I'm going to put it into the uh, avoid category just because there's better variants of this tank. Maybe in the all right situationally, but the avoid cat category starting off. The M48A2 Romponzer. This thing has been buffed up quite a bit. We're going to put it in the decent choice category. Uh, the M4A1, the Rev. Let's actually put this in the decent choice as well. Just because if, if you want to make some silver, have a tank that's like not absolutely broken in every single aspect, but really good shell velocity. And then a decent choice in terms of heat. This is going to be a really good one. Panther 88 was buffed over on console a while ago. From 240 alpha to 280 alpha. Which makes this tank actually either between pay to win or super competitive. But where I'm going to leave this is pay to win. Because the Panther 88, it has preferential matchmaking. Plus it got a damage buff, accuracy buff, reload buff. 
well, not really a reload buff. It got worse in just a little bit. But I'll say pay to win just because you never see tier 10 inside this tank and you're slapping for 280 damage a hit. And if you know how to play it correctly, this thing is a very, very monstrous performer inside the game. That's for your players that are a little bit higher up. All right, Panzer 58. This thing also falls in the same category of the buff, but I would not put it in the super competitive. I'd put it into the great performer category, the Panzer 58. Um, it got the 280 alpha buff. It's got 50 kilometers an hour forward with, I believe it's either 16 or 17 power to weight, making it very good with decent terrain resistances. It gets around the map pretty quick and it stands out in a couple of ways. Uh, up next, Progetto 46. If you guys want me to be honest with this thing, it has surprised me that this thing has simply disappeared because I find it to be either pay to win or extremely competitive inside of World of Tanks console. Even then, for like your average player, I'd put this inside Great Performer. Even for your intermediate class, it would be super competitive. Just because you have the mobility, you have six hunt no, you have 720 alpha potential if you decide to clip out somebody, which means you have the ability to knock out three players immediately, or reserve shells and deal some DPM in the background, or even playing aggressive and getting in close. I think it's kind of funny that you never see the Progetto 46 pop up inside queues anymore. And then again, I don't play mine anymore as well, so I mean, maybe I should. It's an actual beast of a tank. All right, the Skoda T27 uh, over on console. I can't remember what it was named, but they changed the name of it on console. But it is a Czechoslovakian medium tank. And I find this thing to be kind of like super competitive, but maybe in the great performer category more than that more the less because you got the mobility you got a three shot clip 242 millimeters of pin with i want to say two 212 standard i could be wrong on the standard pin on this but i find it to be a really good performing tank it stands out and even scareface would agree that he would probably put this inside great performer category i mean if it was like a progetto this thing would essentially be super competitive if it had an individual reload but I'll put it into uh, Great Performers for the Skoda T27. The STA-2. This is a tank that I never play, but I can say it would be a decent choice in my opinion, but a lot of people in the community would actually say super competitive because it's preferential matchmaking with 275 heat pin. So, I mean, it's preferential matchmaking. It stands out in its own right way where it wants to kind of sit up. So we'll put it inside. We'll, we'll be between decent choice and super competitive. We'll put it in the great performer category just because of those people who swear by the SDA too. Out of respect for them. STG. If you want my opinion on the STG, I would say it's a decent choice in terms of support. Um, if you are playing instead of a platoon lineup, it's a great performer if, as long as you're using it correctly. But I don't want people to get their hopes up about the STG. And I'm going to outright say avoid. This is a very specific tank that if you want to play a support role, this is the tank you go after for a really nice low profile support role, 390 alpha, um, I believe like 11 second reload. It, it's not a super outstanding tank. There are tanks out that are better than it. But STG is not bad. I, I find it to be a fun tank to pull out every once in a while. I'm one of the people that will pull this out just to have some fun with it. But I'm going to be putting it into the avoid category. That way people don't get confused and why it's higher up in the list. Because this is kind of where it's kind of hit its spot. It's always been in the avoid category. Or maybe maybe all right situationally is kind of where I'd put this or decent choice. But it, it's got a very specific play style that you have to follow. Strav 81, the Swedish uh, Carnivon. We'll put it into great performer, maybe even decent choice, because honestly, the Centurion 5-1 outperforms every single variation of any of the other Centurions, whenever it comes down to it. T-34-3, preferential matchmaking tank. Um, they did buff this thing, and they gave it a really good uh, penetration, so we'll put it into either super competitive or great performer. We'll leave the T-34 inside great performer at the moment, maybe even just decent choice, because it's really specific in how you play it. I find it to be awesome with its potato gun and the way it just fills. T25 Pilot, um, it's pretty much going to aim up and in the same category as the M46 Patton KR because it's just the same tank with the reskin. But if anything, the Vengeance would jump up in the all right situationally. But I didn't have the, I don't think I had the Vengeance inside my um, selection that I threw on here after going through everything and making sure we had them all. But 
It, it is what it is. The Vengeance and any of the variations of this tank, I would honestly just put into the all right situationally, but from my perspective, I'm going to say avoid them just because there's absolutely no point to be getting your hands on them. Uh, the Super Pershing. Decent choice. Yeah, this, this would be a decent choice tank to get your hands on and play it a little bit. It's not outstanding. It doesn't stand out in any really heavy-duty way where it's overpowered. It just, it's a decent choice. T42 is a great performer. We're going to leave it inside decent choice just because that's kind of where it belongs. It's not a super competitive art. It doesn't really stand out to me as pay to win or anything else. It's kind of just that all round American, American metal and decent choice. Uh, now we jump into the T44 category. T44, 100. This tank is going to be immediately up to super competitive. Um, T54 mod. This one's going to be brought up to great performer. Now, the T54 100, I did go out and 3 mark this. I am working on my 3 mark on my T54 mod. But the 44 100, you got the concealment, you got the view range, you got the mobility, you got additional space armor. You have all these uh, things that stack up on it that make the a really good, super competitive tank. The T54 Mod 1, you got less concealment, a little bit of a longer reload. Nothing super crazy in terms of that longer reload, but you just... There's so many more pros to the T44 100 than the T54 Mod 1. This is your heavy-duty front-row peekaboo tank, and using it that way, you still get to worry about your gun mantle. So, with the cheeks being buffed in these tanks, however, the cheeks is what made these tanks jump up into these categories. Other than that... It would have been T44 in the Great Performers and the T54 Mod in the All Right Situationally or maybe even Decent Choice. But I'm going to stand by Super Competitive on the T44 100. Up next in the list is going to be the LPC. If you want my opinion on the LPC, I find this thing to be an absolute monster. And I'm going to put it into the Pay to Win category. Because you get a 560 Alpha potential with a double shot which has a 1.12 second interclip reload, so you can throw out that 560 extremely fast. You have 212 standard pin combined with 280 premium pin, or maybe it's 208 standard pin. It's between uh, 200 to 215. I can't remember the exact number on it, but this thing, I would definitely say pay to win along with the Stone Cold Steve Austin, and they are great performing tanks. They make a lot of silver. They influence the fight in a lot of ways. They stand out in a crap ton of ways. They are amazing, amazing tanks. The LPC. I, I stand by that. I believe, I believe that. All right, Type 59. We're going to take this tank. We're going to say Great Performer inside this thing. Um, you do have to throw out a lot of premium inside this tank to make it worthwhile because the 181 standard pin that this thing gets compared to the 240, 241, 243 premium pin that it gets... Uh, the standard rounds for making silver inside of it, it'll be okay. It's got preferential matchmaking, which is why it's in great performers. Other than that, it'd be a decent choice. But since it never sees tier 10, it's going to be in a great performer category. Uh, up next, we got the MXCDC 105, which is also known as the Deuce over on console. It's a decent choice. If you guys disagree with me, let me know in the comments. But that's where I'm going to be throwing the Deuce, just because I don't really play it a whole lot. There's other ones out there that have... Less armor, like the Compenser 105, which is an absolute speed demon, gets around as a ghost, which would be more effective than the Odus, in my eyes. Uh, the G-Sor 1000. I'm going to put this in the Great Performer category because you get that 12, you, 1,200 potential damage output inside this tank. Uh, what is it? 1,280 clip potential inside of it. Along with that, it's a, it's a ghost on the field, if you play it correctly. It'll be Great Performer. Uh, for a player that knows what they're doing inside of it, it could be super competitive, but it's going to stay inside the great performer category. Uh, the ISU-130, it's going to be all right situationally. You have to build it correctly to get it correct and have it lined up all right. But once you start to utilize it, you get some penetrations off, and it starts to go out there like crazy amounts. ISU-152K, it's going to go inside decent choice. I would actually put it in all right situationally. Um... But whatever comes down to it, the ISU-152K, it does sport a big gun that scares people on pushing corners if they see it. So it, it does make people hesitate just a little bit. Tiger 88 This actually surprised me. Once they buffed the damage up to 280, I would actually now put this into the Great Performer category just because 
it now has so much more to offer in terms of damage output combined with the superstructure being 250 millimeters. The hull armor still falls off at 150. So as long as you're only exposing your superstructure, if you're top tier, this tank is a great performer. If you're bottom tier, tier nine, it jumps into decent choice. If you're top tier, however, it is a great performing tank. Could even be super competitive with that reload that it has, which is good ways to permanently track people. But if you're shooting them frontally, it, 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 it's not going to be <laughs> super competitive. Kong Panzer 105. If you want my opinion on this tank, and uh, maybe some people will agree with me, I'm going to put this in either pay to win or super competitive. Because this has got the best concealment, in my opinion, in tier 8 with how it's lined up. It is an absolute monstrosity. Yag Tiger prototype. If this was in the game, I'd put it in the super competitive category. But currently, we do not have access to it. So we're not going to be throwing it on the list. I would love to have this in the game. I would actually outright buy it. Uh, now we have the 90 millimeter Kong Panzer. Um, it is definitely not super competitive. It is not even a decent choice. It's all right situationally. That difference between the 90 and the 105 is massive. Even though they did buff this to 280, which could make it a decent choice, you run out of ammunition. So it's going to be all right situationally. KB4 KTTS. Um, we're going to throw this into the great performer category right here. Beautiful, beautiful standing right there. Good reload, good armor. You've got the same yaw limit left and right. PC, they have limited left yaw. And then, because I already got my hands on it, we're going to take the Orthus right here. We're going to scroll up and we're going to put it into the avoid category. Outright, just avoid this tank at all costs. Don't even think about the Orthus. Think about the KTTS. The Orthus and the time that it takes you to reload the clip and get all your shells out, the KTTS has already put two extra shells out in the field. So it's a little bit slower in terms of damage output. Scorpion G, we're going to take this. We're going to put it into the great performer category. Just because this is kind of your all-round um, good silver combined with good alpha, good penetration. Hasn't really fallen off because it has that mobility uh, until the new tier 9 light tank comes out. Or tier 10 light tank that has like god tier penetration against that thing at 26 millimeters. Uh, Strav S1, if you want my opinion, all right situationally. Some people would disagree with me and they would throw it into the super competitive category or even the great performer category. But we're going to put it into the all right situationally because it's very specific. And my specific is Himmelsdorf. Would you like it? And there. We'll see if anyone tries to argue with that one. SU-130 PM. This is going to be put into the same category as the uh, Scorpion G. But if not, even decent choice due to the lack of mobility. But it does offer a 320 millimeter heat pin round, which makes it stand out a little bit more in terms of damage output and penetration rather than the uh, 311 APCR or 312 APCR. That heat round will be able to go through some targets at extreme angles, while the other one will not. Now, here's the Bison. We're going to put the Bison into a decent choice category. I'm not going to say it's a great performer. It is a decent choice. You are rocking a 130 with 440 Alpha with uh, AP Premium at 303 pin or 307. I can't remember off the top of my head. But it's got a AP Penetration uh, Premium rounds, which means it's got five degrees of normalization on contact. This thing is an absolute monstrosity whenever it comes down to pinning heavy tanks because nothing can really stand against it. To give you an idea, the T-103 Bison can go through the front of the 703 in a head-on-head -head fight. You can go right through that top plate without even caring. That is how strong that shell is. TS-5, I would want to put this into great performer category, but it kind of has to get thrown into the all right situationally, and that hurts me because... I want to put it in decent choice. However, due to map design and everything else that's in the game, this tank is extremely difficult to play unless you know what's coming up next. If you know what's coming up, you can say great performer. But at the moment, we're going to put it into the all right situationally just because it's very situational to the map that you were on for this tank to stand out in any way at all. All right, so now time for the Terrapan... And the Diamondback, this thing got a buff that buffed it up to 285 pin. I would say super competitive until you're against tier 10. Against tier 10, decent choice. 
But at the moment, I'm going to say it's super competitive just because I enjoy playing this thing. If you can make that DPM work inside this tank with the, I believe, 4.5, 4.8 second reload, permanently tracking people, being able to throw out damage nonstop, 245 standard pin or 243 standard pin with uh, 280 plus premium pin, but it's APCR. Um, this thing can be an absolute nuisance to deal with. So we'll put it in great performers to kind of just, you know, quit it kind of just give it that balance. I wouldn't say super competitive. This list is kind of specific, but I find the Diamondback to be an absolute fantastic tank, but it does fall in the same category as a TS5, but the Terra Pan is a little bit faster. At least I believe it is. The Viper, uh, this is a tank I actually had to talk to a couple of people about, and they do believe it's a great performing tank. Uh, they don't say it's super competitive or stands out in any super crazy way that makes it overpowered, but it's kind of that middle-of-the-pack tank that you can get some really good damage out of it. You can make people really hesitate to do anything, but if you get caught out inside of it, you kind of fall apart inside the decent choice category. But for me, I'd put it inside the Great Performer. I haven't played it yet, but based upon the replays and everything I've seen of it and how I would play this tank, it would for me, it'd be a good performing tank but it would take me a long time to three market by my play style that I would have inside of it. Now, that is some justification. WZ120, 1FT. You want to see where I'm going to throw this? Super competitive. 120 millimeters frontal armor, uh, 80 millimeter side. I believe it's 80 millimeter side or 75 millimeter side. You got really good armor, really good concealment, a nasty 122 millimeter gun, and it is just an absolute baller. EBR75. I would put this into the decent choice category, but for the average player and the players of World of Tanks, it's going in the avoid for the console community. For me, I would put it in decent choice because you can make the high explosives work. But at the moment, the way that wheels work and everything else, they drift out of control and you lose control of your tanks a lot. This is going to be thrown into the avoid category outright. If somebody else wants to you know, share your opinion on this tank, keep in mind, I don't say it's a bad tank. It's just that the way that the mechanics work on it, I don't recommend it. But if you do want to get your hands on it, it is not a bad choice. All right, Panzer V light tank. To be honest, I don't think we have this one. I need to double check. We do have the awful Panzer, uh, the awful Panther, but it's actually a tier 7 on console rather than a tier 8. All right, so next up on the list, we're going to have the ELC Even 90 along with, is it the Vanguard? There's another one. There's two variants of this, and they're both, I, I would say, decent choices. In terms of concealment, they're really good. But in terms of firepower and everything else, they're very difficult to work with. But players that can work them, they can be considered great performers or even super competitive. But for the average community, I'm going to say decent choice. Uh, the Sinlac, you want my honest opinion on this thing? Uh, it's a great performing tank. Until you get shot in the side and you get set on fire. It's going to go in decent choice. That, thing's got a f that thing is not fireproof. That thing is the fire. Uh, the Hawk 30 just sports a 90 millimeter with a really good 105 millimeter penetrating um, high explosive. That if you can utilize the 182 millimeters uh, APCR standard pin, 250 heat pin, 70 kilometers, it's going to be great performer. This thing is really difficult to uh, kind of counteract if you're going up against somebody that knows how to play it because it's basically just a miniature um leopard whenever it comes down to it small gun uh the m the m4190 uh, german light tank i'm gonna say decent choice inside this one just because i wouldn't say all right situation it's a decent choice it does have really bad concealment whenever it comes down to it compared to others inside of the category for light tanks but that 90 mil is the same as the hawk 30 so, I mean, whenever it comes down to it, Hawk 30's got better mobility than this one. So, I mean, the, the 4190 is going to be put into a decent choice. The Hawk 30 is going to get thrown into the great performing category. LT432. This is a tank that a lot of people may agree, may disagree. Uh, I'm going to throw this thing into super competitive. Like, in my opinion, I would go super competitive just because you have the armor. You have a lot of things to offer up inside this tank. It's not pay to win, but it would be considered super competitive. But it's also very situational whenever it comes down to it. So maybe great performers. I do play this thing extremely aggressive. And in terms of raw damage output, my LT432, uh, the most I've ever done was like 5,600 damage raw output while using it. 
M41D, there's going to be a couple of people that are going to say super competitive. Uh, personally, for me, I don't find it to be super competitive. I'm going to throw it down into the uh, decent choice category just because some people will say super competitive. Some people will say pay to win. Whenever it comes down to it, it has a what is it, 75, 85 millimeter APCR premium and standard. So you kind of lose out on that super raw penetration compared to some of the others in the category. Like the LT432 um, has less pen than the M41D, but the LT432 has got really good concealment compared to the M41D. So the LT432 is a little bit more ghosty compared to uh, M41D. But the 41D, it does have a decent gun. It gets a decent amount of damage out. But in terms of a light tank, I don't find it to be kind of your passive scout. It's more of your active scouting role. And for me, it's going to be a decent choice. T44 Lightweight. I don't believe we have this in the game yet, so we're going to skip it. T92 Light Tank. If you want my honest opinion, I'm going to put this into the avoid category. Um, but for people who do want to get it, it's going to hit the uh, decent choice category. Same as the M41D. The reason why I'm doing the avoid category is because its premium rounds are 5,000 plus gold and you reload in three seconds. If you're not paying attention, this tank will cost you millions in terms of restocking whenever it comes down to it. Other than that, I would put it into great performer or decent choice. But for the average community who wants to make silver, that goes there. All right, that is everything. And these are all the things we don't have on console just yet. Uh, captured King Tiger. This one, as everything takes a year and a half to load, is going to be all right situationally. I find this thing to be a very decent tank, still waiting for its gun to get buffed. If its gun was buffed, this would actually get thrown into the Great Performer category, but for right now, it's all right situationally. Uh, the Roswell. Based upon everything that I've seen about this tank, and the people I've talked to, which would be Bouncy and a couple of others, it's a great performing tank in terms of damage output, penetration, and mobility combined with it. I do believe it has a turbo mode as well, making it get around the field being really snappy. Panzer Jaeger. All right, immediately, we're jumping into a category of now pay to win. That's a Panzer Jaeger for you. In my opinion, it is pay to win. T32 prototype. Uh, they did buff the turn armor. It did kind of get a little bit of love. They did kind of decide to say, hey... You know, maybe this thing is okay. We're going to put the T32 prototype here. We're going to actually move the Capture King Tiger up to decent choice. Uh, as I go 10 and a half miles, the M26 T99. This is a tank. I don't think it's overpowered. I don't think it's underpowered. I kind of feel like it's really well middle of the pack and the way I would expect rockets to be introduced in the game, uh, except for all the BS that they've been doing. So we're going to put it into all right situationally. M41... Brazil. Uh, some people would argue and say that the rounds on this are better than some others, and I can't remember the exact reason why, but I would say decent choice. It doesn't stand out. It is a light tank killer whenever it comes down to it, but there's so many other kind of light tank killers in the game that this one, it, it's kind of niche, in my opinion, but someone would disagree. The M48A2 Patton, along with the Undertaker, we're going to put this into the avoid category. However, this does sport a 200 module damage or a 203 module damage, which does kind of give it this uh, really special kind of high explosive round. But that high explosive round is not worthwhile. Uh, same, thing, same thing about the Soldier on uh, M67. I'm going to put it into the avoid category, maybe even the all right situationally category and just leave it there and then be happy about it. Stockade. This is one that's a three-shot autoloader. It'd be a decent choice along with the... Where the heck? Did, there are so many freaking tanks in this list. All right, stock it. We're going to leave it in a decent choice. I can't remember where I put the IS-3A. So many tanks. But decent choice for the uh, stockade. Sinjutsu. If you want my honest opinion on this tank... In the right hands... This tank can be considered pay to win. Even if it's not pay to win, it gets thrown into the super competitive category real quick with the way that this thing has been put together. Even against tier 10, it is a menace and a threat. So we'll put it into super competitive. It is kind of in between pay to win and super competitive in terms of the output that it is capable of. Up next, Equalizer. 
It's artillery. I hate it. Uh, somebody in the comments can kind of give their idea. This is actually really, really... Uh, I, it would get thrown into the pay-to-win category, if you want me to be honest with you, because it is dumb, in my opinion. I think all artillery is cancer. Uh, Tiger Shark and the other four variants of this tank, we're going to throw these into the um, Great Performer, three-shot autoloader category. They got three shots. They threw out some decent damage. And primarily, the only people that play these tanks are the people who got them during the uh, Hot Wheels event that are good players. And they would actually probably stop and say, Tiger Shark would be super competitive. But for me, it's going to be Great Performer. The, the speed on these kind of make me feel like... Uh, I get caught out a lot, so for that's where it's going to sit for me. The Wraith, um, while it may be in the same category as you know its its brother, the uh, fifty eight Panza, which is somewhere on the list. I do believe I put it in Great Performer. The Wraith would actually be all right situationally, or even a decent choice because you do have spaced armor, but you lose power to weight. You lose. Uh, just a little bit of terrain resistances like this one gets a little bit worse compared to the base variant and it's probably even in the same category it's somewhere on the list it, oh my gosh there are, it is ridiculous to think how many tier eights are in world of tanks it is obsessive the asterion so the asterion's here the dread dozer and a couple of the others because these are very specific tanks if you want my opinion the asterion kind of earns its uh, decent choice category with its penetration, its reload, the additional space armor from the bowl, the hatch coverage that it gets. It's a decent choice, but it is a heavy tank. It's not a medium. It was changed. It does, it does sport a 105. I believe it's a 105 during the time I did testing on it. It ricocheted off of um, auto ricochet 90, but it overmatched the um, 105 overmatch that was needed. And so the, that could be a 105. Like a 90 would bounce off it. Dread Dozer. This is going to be thrown immediately into the avoid category. Now, the Asterion and the Dread Dozer both suffer from the same thing, which is the engine block has a cutout on the hull, forcing it into the armor, which means if you aim for the engine block, you're actually going through 70 millimeters of armor rather than 152 because they did a cutout on it to make it flat so they could fit a cosmetic piece on the inside. So it really takes away from this tank in terms of like how it plays and performs. The Hydra, a lot of people are going to say, uh, great performer, decent choice. I'm going to say all right situationally. My reason for this, sure, this is a 75% silver bonus. Okay. But let's say you pull out the Kriavets. Speaking of which... The Kriavets, I don't think, is on this list. I may need to add it. I am going to need to add it. But the Hydra is a tank that it doesn't have the mobility compared to other tanks in the game that, for instance, the 75% makes up for its lack of movement. Uh, so, like, if we were to take out an IS-5, IS-5 would be more mobile. Um, it's not going to have more damage output than the Hydra, but in terms of reload and everything else that it can do, I would actually put the IS-5 higher than the Hydra. But due to the 75% silver bonus that the Hydra is offering, it's going to sit into the all right situationally. And I have another tank to add to the list now. Got to go find it. All right, it is getting super far into this. The Object 259A. I'm going to take this and immediately jump it over into a great, com um, great performer tank inside this tank. I would say super competitive, but it's going to sit inside the great performer category just because it does have a bit of a learning cur curve. Once you learn the learning curve, however, it is a super competitive tank in my eyes. But for people who are intermediate and everything else, it could be considered a decent choice. But I want you to know, I do find this to be a great performing tank. It stands out in so many ways, and it, it is an absolute blast. Wind of Akara, uh, wind of whatever the wing tank is. If this tank had a pneumatic suspension that you could manually uh, choose how it works, how to line it up the way you want it to, I would put this into the decent choice or even great performer category. But due to the way that it was introduced to the game, it's going into the I hate it category because it plays against you more than it plays with you. Fortress. Uh, this one is going to be put into the decent choice category 
you are sporting a 250 uh, millimeter gun, um, you know, your superstructure is 250 millimeters with the buff. Uh, but whenever it comes down to it, the tech tree variant outmatches the fortress by quite a bit in terms of mobility, movement, and everything else. But fortress is not a bad tank. I would put it in the great performer, but it's too slow to be put into the great performing category just because it lacks in a couple of ways. But the reload that it offers with the 320 alpha makes it an absolute. If, if you ever see pop up for sale, I just I would recommend to get it and try it out. Atomic, um, all right, situationally. I'm not a big fan of these tanks. Some people would disagree with me and they would say that it's a great performer or even decent choice. So we'll compromise and leave it inside the decent choice category. Same thing about the Bullerophon. The Bullerophon, however, this one, you can technically probably say even pay to win for the Bullerophon. You got the gun shield, you know, it's covering the hatch, it's additional armor, you got additional spaced armor in the front. It's literally just a Centurion 5 1 rack with spaced armor protection on it with no downsides. You could consider this to be a pay-to-win tank, but we're going to put it in the super competitive category to compromise on it because uh, the pay-to-win section is really specific on what ends up inside there. Bullerophon, I would not say, would end up in pay-to-win, but it's very close. It comes around once a year. It's a great collector item, and it has a lot of output. Eradicator. This is a experienced trading tank, and speaking of which, all right, there's the Earth Shaker. There's there's a couple of them. Eradicator. It's an XP tank. However, I find it to be a decent choice. To me, it doesn't stand out in a whole lot of ways. It the three shot auto loader could put it up in the great performing category, but the speed and everything else that it's offering, it's kind of like a worse Centurion, like Carnivon Action X. This would end up in RA situationally, but the situations this thing is able to end up in. Makes this thing kind of go, uh oh, and it it's got really good damage potential. Two eighty alpha, three shot, like three gun magazine. It it's hard. Inferno, Inferno. I wouldn't say is super competitive or pay to win. Uh, this thing would be like a. It, for me, it end up in decent choice, just because it's been around for a long time. I don't see it really standing out a whole lot in terms of like the way it's designed or anything else. For instance, the Charlemagne. As I'm trying to find it, there are so many tanks. It's in the same category. It's right here. But um, yeah, no, I'd say that fits in decent choice for how it lines up. You get the additional space protection, which, and honestly, this one would be considered better than the base variant. But with the way that they both perform, Inferno's got a little bit more space protection. You could say great performer and leave it in there without you know much of an issue. So I could technically just leave it there and be happy. Uh. The artillery, the FV-305, uh, this thing is uh, another pay-to-win tank because it's artillery that you can just skybomb people. Just kidding. It's actually, in terms of artillery, it would be considered a decent choice. Uh, as I was talking to a couple of people a while ago, they said that it's not one that stands out, but it's super, super derpy. And they, they don't recommend it, but it's just funny. So we'll put it into the... <laughs> The, the decent choice. All right, the Vindicator. We're going to put this in the great performing category until you run out of ammunition. Then once you run out of ammunition, then you put it in the I hate it because you're out of ammo. So great performer, Vindicator is going to end up in there just because you got mobility, you got gun depression, you have decent concealment, you got decent view range. It's kind of the all-around decent tank destroyer, but it doesn't stand out in any way. And it's just whenever it comes down to it, big silver, it gets the job done. The alpha is low. So it does end up in decent choice more than it does in great performer, but it's kind of a mix between both. Uh, up next, the HMH-51. This is going to end up at the same category as our right situationally. The M4A1 Rev uh, that we threw up into decent choice has better power to weight and better terrain resistances than the, HM, the heavy metal hero M51, Super Sherman. So the Rev, better power to weight, makes a big difference in terms of the 51. It's like a whole two power to weight. Type 59.2, PC does not have this. It doesn't exist on PC. Uh, personally, I'm not a fan of it. I don't mind it. It's a decent choice. It makes sense that it has the 250 heat pin. It doesn't stand out to be overpowered. It's kind of middle of the pack in terms of like what it does. And it's one of the tanks that they love to give away because it has a giveaway gun which is 200 standard pin, 250 premium pin. They don't like giving away overpowered things. 
This is one of the tanks they give away because it's not overpowered. Up next, the HMH-58. This is a console exclusive. And if you want me to be honest, in the right hands, it's super competitive. In bad hands, it's uh, all right situational. In the hands of a person who plays it nonstop, it can be considered pay to win. But this is a tank that we can throw into super competitive, and I would be okay with that. Like, I enjoy this tank. I play it, and during the times I play it, it's got that three-round magazine that's 300 damage, so you have 900 damage potential. You got 210 millimeters of heat pin, and then I think it's like 170, 175 standard pin. I could be wrong about the penetration, but it's a very, very competitive tank if used correctly. So for starters, I mean, I want to throw this in the super competitive but great performer. I'm going to leave it in super competitive. I'm going to stick by that because I think this thing is actually competitive. Oh, man. ERAC 105. All right. This can already be... Everyone probably already knows where this is going. This is outright super competitive. That thing, this thing is a freaking beast. During the time I played my ERAC, I remember it like the back of my hand. That's a new scar. But um, this thing, it's got a decent gun. It's got good concealment. It's got good view range. It's got everything about a light tank that you want. And then you got a medium tank gun. Specifically the same as the Type 59 II. Or the King Dragon. King Dragon, uh, this thing will end up in the same category as the Type 59. In a decent choice. I can't remember which one has better power to weight. I think the King Dragon might. But I'm not 100% sure. That's one that you'd have to double check in yourself, but leaving those in decent choice is kind of where it's going to sit. The Minotaur. All right. This is kind of where things get a little bit better in terms of like the KV5 lineup. This thing, if played correctly, can be considered super competitive. The armor buffs, the hatch buff, the penetration, the 75% silver. The silver is kind of the reason why it's going to end up in super competitive because you'll have people playing this more than any of the other categories that they're making 400,000, 500,000 silver a game inside their Minotaur because they know what they're doing. Reverse side scraping uh, on the left side of the tank to make that big hatch disappear. And then being top tier, super competitive against tier 10, can be considered a great performer. I think the Minotaur is a really decent tank. Legion! I hate it. I hate it. But it's going to get thrown into the avoid category as soon as the 59 patent because it's the same tank. Def Chariot. Um, that's going to get thrown into the avoid category. Or maybe even the R raid situationally. This is a 112 that they decided to try and redo the 112. And then I think the Def Chariot is the entire reason why they won't buff the 112 to 196 standard AP pin because they want people to buy the alternate variants, which is the Def Chariot. Thing is, the Def Chariot has lower top speed. It has uh, a longer reload. Um, it, it has every single con that the 112 does, plus some more. So, like, you take the 112. 112 is a very good tank. I think the 112 stands out in its own right. It is a decent tank. It, it's got armor all over it. it is a, it's a meat shield whenever it comes down to it. And then there's the Def Chariot. It can go up against tier 10, and it's slower. So for me, I don't ever recommend anyone to buy this unless they redo this, this tank. It's also equipped with a 122 caliber gun rather than a 130 caliber gun, which is what the statistics um, represent in terms of what gun it should have with the 460 alpha that it offers on the field. But with 250 heat, this thing, it just doesn't stand out at all in my eyes it is super bad the orachi you want my opinion on the orachi i'm gonna say great performer it's slow yes uh you put on the the 100 millimeter which is the only one that you run on this to be competitive inside of it but it, it's a tank that i kind of have a little bit of appreciation for in terms of like design philosophy in the game it is uh reused tier 7 model brought up to tier 8 that is not better in any category or it's not absolutely broken in any way. But if you play it correctly, it can be a, a absolute turning point in a game and it, it's just enjoyable. Personally, I would love to see them take the 15 centimeter on it 
and increase the penetration from the 100 or whatever the heck it's currently at, which is bad, and bump it up to like 180, 190. Take the heat shell from the 150 or whatever the heck the heat shell's at because it's, it's really bad numbers and bump, bump it up to like 240 millimeters of pen or even 230 millimeters of pen. Give us a decent heat shell on it and give us a decent AP and make that 15 centimeter a little bit more competitive than what it is. And this could be considered a really good performing tank in the game if they were to do that. But at the moment, not really. All right. Up next on the list is going to be the uh, Type 63. This thing is all right situationally. If you want my honest opinion, I would put this into... What the heck is going on? This thing is running super slow. I would put the Type 63 in the super competitive category just because of the way that this thing acts, the way it performs. The only downside to it is that it, the way it drives, the you have to manually drive it the entire time, and it, it's going to end up in decent choice or even all right situationally because it's just a tank that I don't like in terms of the way it moves and the way it plays. It's got a great gun. It, it's a great tank. It's got horrible armor, but, man, it's a great tank. It stands out to me in so many ways, but I would love to put it in super competitive, but it's going to be all right situationally. The Kari. During the time I played this, uh, I'd say great performer. If you play it correctly, it's not that bad of a tank. Um, I don't. I didn't play a whole lot of matches inside of it, but during the time I did play it, it's got a nasty gun. I'd say it definitely earns a spot in great performer category. Up uh, next, as things take a year and a half to load, Ragnarok. In my opinion, this tank is overhyped. There are others that have got better concealment, like the Borask or some of the others, but I'll put it in the great performance category for the silver bonus, everything else that it offers. It is kind of in that range to be decent, but at the same time, I'd put it in decent choice. But for everyone else that would disagree with me, great performer. I don't think it's pay to win. I don't think it's super competitive because it's a T-34 haul. And it's not even the good T-34 hull. That's the Tier 5 hull. So, you can bounce, but not a whole lot. Oh, man, load. All right, the TVP-100, Tank Destroyer. You want my honest opinion on this thing? Uh, super competitive if played correctly. Average player base. It's going to be a great performer for everybody else that plays the game. You enjoy the game. Decent choice. I wouldn't say it stands out in any super way, but it hits hard. 250 alpha, 4.2 second reload. Really nasty high explosives if you can make them work. There are so many things to go over. This list is gigantic. Holy crap. I think we'll finish off the premiums and a couple special selections, and then uh, whatever's left will kind of fall in the decent choice category, but I'll take out some of the really big... Big ones that stand out to me. Earth Shaker, I'll be honest, uh, that goes into the avoid category for me. A lot of other people will disagree. But for me personally, it's going to go in the avoid category because that power to weight kills it. Dragon, it's had a lot of overhype over the years. I'll put it into the decent choice category, which I do think is above the Lance and C. No, I think it's below the Lance and C. Yeah, Lanson's in the uh, great performer right here. Sorry, guys. I prefer penetration over heat pen. 236 compared to 242. Iron Rain. This thing has been overhyped so many times. I'm going to have some people tell me why. I'll give you my reason why. It's been overhyped a thousand times. This website is slowing down big time because I'm here. Reaper Scythe. Let's take this up real fast. We'll take a look. And we'll throw this into super competitive if played correctly in your top tier. That is a heavy-duty medium tank that stands out in its own right. Um, King Tiger, you want me to be honest? King Tiger, Tiger 2, and all those variants, they're in super competitive. Um, maybe even grind to win rather than pay to win. Like These are monstrous tanks that... Ever since their buff, ever since the damage buff, ever since the armor buff, they have been 
brought up from the ground and up. Mantis, um, some people would say pay to win. I, I would disagree just because it's got worse concealment than the, the Borask. And they would probably be put into great performer category. Oh, man. This website. There's so many freaking screenshots here. It's dying. Okay. Uh, let's take a look. Brick. Some people will say avoid it. Like Clone Guy. Clone Guy would say avoid this thing. But it's been buffed quite a bit. It's been kind of brought up a little bit. And personally, it would be a decent choice. But it's going to hit the R8 situational. Just because it has received some love. It is kind of on par to some other heavies, but it's lacking in a lot of areas. And what they should do is just bring it up just a little bit more, like 300 alpha rather than the 280. Leave the reload the way that it is, and it would stand out really good. Demolisher, it's all right situationally. It's an XP crew trainer, but it's slow. The armor on it, same as the prototype, and it doesn't really stand up. So... We're going to go through this quicker, a little bit faster. Ferdinand, you can put this in the great performer category. T32. Let's throw this up into grind to win. I think the T32 is an absolute monstrosity. It was good before the buff. After the buff, it became an absolute chad. Progetto 54. We're going to bring this all the way up to super competitive. If played correctly, it is an absolute monstrosity of a heavy tank for the, um, the tech tree lineup. Because I'm starting to hit my limits here in terms of, like, an hour-long video. This is outrageous. TNH 105. Same thing about this tank. We're going to bring this all the way up to super competitive. If played correctly, the thing is an absolute monstrosity with the double-shot potential. Also, it's mostly just website loading. Uh, the tank and the turtle... I put them in decent choices. The Grom, it's too new to really rate just yet. The VK100-01P, if you are top tier, uh, some people will agree it is grind to win because it's been overbuffed all hell and back. The hatch on it needs to be readjusted, and they haven't readjusted it just yet. The 53TP, we'll take this real quick, and we'll put it into uh, Great Performer. If you know how to use it, it is a little bit of a tank that likes to struggle. The Rhino... Um, after a couple of things that I've looked into, a lot of people are saying it's a great performing tank. It's a super competitive tank. It was a pay to win tank. So I'm going to go with uh, a great performer. It's a tank I'm looking forward to getting. It's a Tiger II Hall, a lot of space armor, Carnivon Action X turret with a 122 combined onto it with some decent gun statistics. I haven't played it yet, but I really want to. The Indy Panzer can be considered like uh, super competitive and up there. Panther 2 is in the same category. Cheerio Tier is in the same category. Uh, t T69, same category. Uh, is there anything on this list that I would throw out the window? None of them. The rest of these I'd throw in the decent choice category, except for the VK4502A. The VK4502A is a decent choice Maybe even great performer in the right hands. This, this is kind of biased opinion for me, you know, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this in the grind to win. And for those of you that know why, this is a respectable tank that goes in super competitive. I shoot nothing but standards out of it. It is a tank that I expect people to know how to play it if you continue to grind it and three mark it. Other than that, I would put it into the uh, avoid category. <laughs> But it is a decent tank. Uh, super competitive Yank Panther 2, Strum Tiger P. Uh, it's all right situationally. Kree Vets, we can take this up real fast and we can put this into the super competitive category. That, that's pretty much it for me. Dude. This has been long. I wasn't expecting this to take this long. But I'll do a slow scroll down so you guys can pause, look over it. And if you agree with me, then you agree with me. Everything else that's left in the list is pretty much decent choice. Decent performers, because a lot of the tech tree tanks, which is kind of what's left at the moment, other than the T41E, which decent choice, Trinity, it kind of falls in its own little category. Oh, there's two grooms in here. I double screenshotted it. All right. Mistakes were made. So Tiger 2, it's going to end up in the same category as the King Tiger, but maybe even a little bit better, because I do find the Tiger 2 right here, you would put the King Tiger in the super competitive and then the tech tree variant, which is kind of crazy to think, 
would be grind the win because the king tiger lacks in a little bit of areas because it has less upgrades in terms of the tiger too so king tiger kind of falls behind a little bit i mean it's a trade-off that's worthwhile and that would be about it a lot of these double shot tanks they're decent the is3 ever since they buffed it this would be thrown into the super competitive category Boop. I should have did this really fast and then just talked about the tanks over the list instead of like actually selecting them and going up and down. <laughs> Cruncher, you want my opinion on this? Uh, there's a reason why I haven't unlocked it. It doesn't stand out to me in any way. It could be essentially a R edge situational tank, but it doesn't stand out to me. The 110, everyone talks crap in this tank. And there's a group of people that talk absolute mad crap about this tank. But you want my opinion? It's a great performing tank. It's been buffed. It's been brought back up. It's had its penetration amplified. And even with the stock gun, I was still able to do 4,000 damage inside this tank. I don't think it's bad. I think it just needs a little bit of love and people to stop disrespecting it. Oh, man. My brain. It's fried. It's gone. MX-65 ton. This, I wouldn't say, is a super competitive, absolutely back-breaking tank, but it could potentially end up in the same category as the T-34, which is super competitive. But the way that it is now, I would actually throw it into great performers with the AMX-65 ton. Uh, wherever that WZ was, I can't remember, but super competitive, I think, is right where it deserves to be. Emil, it's it's all right. I'm not a fan of the Emil. Uh, the Lynx, no view range. You get caught out. The Bat Chat, there's going to be a lot of people that will agree that they would put it in super competitive with the way that it plays, but a lot of people, would majority, would say great performer. All right, I'm going to be honest. The rest of these, I would kind of throw into just the decent choice category. And that's where they would end up. Except for the Ferdinand. Depending on the match, this would be considered super competitive. Same thing about the SU-101. CS-53, uh, this can be considered super competitive, just hands down, by itself. Borsig, it's overhyped in my opinion. You can kind of sit there in the uh, pinned category and completely forgotten about. Anyways, that'd be my list. I'm not going to finish this thing because this is already going on long. This website is slowly dying. So if you guys find yourselves agreeing with me or disagreeing with me on some of the uh, tanks on the list, let me know down in the comment section down below. This is something I wanted to do a while ago, but holy crap, that took a lot longer than I wanted it to. Anyways, you guys have a great day, afternoon, night. I need to get some water. And ibuprofen. Oh, man.